morning. Um, good afternoon. I just wanted to ask you three questions. Number one, do you like poetry? Absolutely. Fantastic. Do you understand poetry or is it too crazy? Uh, it depends which uh, poems I'm reading. Mm, yeah. I understood that. Do you find poetry cryptic in nature? Do you understand most poetry that you read or hear? I think it depends on the style. Mm. And I do find some, some mystery involved. Okay, gotcha. Um, but I think it depends on, on what the person's trying to get across. Gotcha. That, now, is the mystery something that you appreciate? Do you like to kind of go into it? Like, yeah, like I think that it uh, it can allow you to think. Any, I'm I'm into any any uh, you know. I think uh, causing someone to have to think a little deeper ah, is a great okay, thing. Okay, okay. Last question. Do you know the difference between poetry and spoken word poetry? Uh, I'm not sure if it's actually right, but I think spoken poetry is when you actually recite poetry. Okay, gotcha. Okay, very very good. Thank you for your time. Of course. Appreciate you. Do you know the difference between poetry and spoken word? Um, yes, I think in general, but I think they can be cohesive, and I, I think they can be one and the same. That's all I have. Ian. Thank you so much. Uh, My personal goal when I came out here today was really to encourage um, my fellow creatives, uh, well, to encourage and inspire. And my message today on this episode of Respecting the Pen is everything ain't for everybody. And you'll have a lot of people out there that'll be like, oh, well, some people just do not get, understand, or appreciate the art of writing, period. Nonetheless, poetry. Nonetheless, cryptic poetry. Poetry that doesn't... The type of poetry that just doesn't spell it out for you. Now, some people, quite a few people actually, some very artistic people, love a nice cryptic poem. They love the way it sounds, they love the cadence, they love the way it flows, and the, the point of the poem is subject to interpretation, and it's treated as art, and you can kind of bend what the meanings are, or bend what the definition is, and you leave it up to the person enjoying the art to decide what the poem meant, what may or may not have inspired you, what what uh, what a metaphor was in reference to what that metaphor meant. You know, it was, did the rain signify sadness? Did the white of the snowfall signify the white of a of a sheet of paper in that particular line, and and so forth? So sometimes, as poets, we get a little caught up, and writers as well. Sometimes we get caught up in wanting to to the crowd, wanting to, well, wanting to, wanting to please, wanting that success, and sure, you know, uh, yes, who does not want their art appreciated by the masses, of course, um, but that appeal to the masses should never come at, at the compromise of yourself. Uh, so what I'm going to share with you is a poem called uh, My Sleeping Queen. And 
I did it just for the love of bending words. And it's really just a poem serenading an, uh, uh, a female poet while she's sleeping. That's all it really is. And uh, you take it for what it is. Peace. If not for slumber, most would not find daily. I find peace inside your twilight expression. I serenade your resting essence. Your calm wraps around my spirit like a warm blanket in the evening's chill. Craving the flavor of one who inspires, I watch your windows close due to slumber seduction. Finding the calm inside its tranquility and harmonizing with its serenity, I hide behind a blue curtain with a wine glass, patiently waiting with my window ajar, curious as to how my lover's flower will reflect the new sun rays of creativity. Her inner body revitalized and her soul refreshed, I give her a canvas with Covering your internal explosions, I pour them into my tall wine glass with an aroused sense of purpose. I drink yet remain thirsty. Finding peace inside the stillness of its love-stained crystal, I eagerly await to be drenched by my sleeping queen.